uh, check out correctly, and so I couldn't get on for a few minutes. So thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how we recover today. We've had a lot of problems in the last couple of years, and some things came to mind that I thought maybe I wanted to share with you. So I'll go ahead and just kind of get started. And uh, at any time, uh, I'm going to maybe ask some questions, too. And uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, join the party and answer some questions if you uh, would like to, to jump in. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Let's see. There we go. So what we're gonna be talking about is recovering today. And I've already kind of mentioned that, but there has been so much information come up that I just wanted to talk as a group of people and see if we could share some ideas. So, I do want to cover a little bit about the Wave Watch and remind you, uh, so you could share it with other people, that we do have the Frequency Fanatics on the um, Facebook group. It is a private group, so they just have to sign up, but we'd love to have you there. And then you can watch recordings or go back over almost 50 one-hour segments that uh, I do have. And hopefully I've gotten them titled so that you know what the particular subject is if, if you want to look up something there. What we're talking about that kind of got me thinking in the last week or so is all about this new uh, documentary that came out from uh, Stu Peters, and he has it titled Died Suddenly. Now, again, I'm, you know, I wish I was in teacher mode because I, I would like to say how many of you, you know, by show of hands, how many of you have seen that? Um, I think it's been fairly popular with um uh, the ladies or people that join me here, I'm not sure uh, how many of you have seen it. And so I don't uh, know that I want to explain too much of it, but basically he's got a lot of facts and statistics and videos and scary images about people who died suddenly. And um, somewhere I'm missing one of my slides, I guess, but um he is saying that died suddenly is the most searched Google term that there is. So that kind of makes you scared just a little bit in itself. And then he has images of, you know, people in all walks of life, all ages uh, going about their lives and suddenly they're dropping dead. They're dying suddenly. So it's a it's a big idea. Uh, we are maybe in that fear factor because of some of the information that we've seen. But if we go the opposite way, there is some information, and I did put it at the bottom of the screen. It's from the Daily Skeptic. And this person who wrote it is really more of a conservative, and he was kind of uh, talking trash about Stu Peter's uh, report or, or uh, video. And there were four ideas that I gleaned, and I'm not saying that I can... Um, repeat them exactly but he was saying that there were some statistics that were messed up in Stu's video and he did not like that but I am sorry to say I haven't been able to check every statistic down and see which way Stu was saying it and which way uh, the daily skeptic was saying it but one of the main ideas or the one of the four main ideas is that some of the statistics that were given from the military that they it, it makes us have that fear factor because the military counted every visit as a problem with the shots rather than every diag rather than a, the just the main diagnosis so he said that skewed the statistics and made it look like the military men were sicker than they were. Another idea that he said was that declining birth rates in Australia was incorrect. And he said just the month of, of December 21 was not correct. 
And somehow one month, now this is my idea going, going more on Stu Peter's side, because he was saying that uh, December was not correct. They did not report that. And so then it skewed the whole year. I'm sorry. I don't know how one month of, you know, not incorrect or incorrectly reporting birth rates would throw the whole year off. Now, if six months were off. Yes, there would be a problem with that. But that's his idea. He's coming back with Stu and saying, yay, nay. And that's what we get into all the time. That's why we are so confused. It's like, who's right? Who's wrong? What do we believe? Um, obviously, I'm not a, uh, this isn't a political show at all necessarily, but today it's kind of getting a little bit that way. Um, he was also saying that the incredibly high miscarriage rate uh, in the Pfizer report was incorrectly reported. And again, he's saying they did the statistics wrong. Now, I'm not agreeing with this person either. I'm not saying that that is right at all. I'm just saying that's what the report was saying. So if you're interested, you might take some time on that. And if you haven't seen the Died Suddenly uh, report, you might uh, look at it just to see what you think about it, because I'm stirring up some ideas here. And then the last one was the depopulation agenda. And I think a lot of us have seen Bill Gates saying something about the vaccinations and depopulation. Maybe you haven't. So maybe you could look that up. But he was saying that Bill Gates, poor Bill Gates, that his statement was taken, uh, was not taken correctly. And, um, you know, I've had several people look at the, that and say, well, I don't know how you could take it any other way. But here is one person that did and he's reporting it. And now that's putting a lot of us into confusion. So I say today I started with confusion and then we're going to see if we can walk through it and find some more ideas and work on that and give us some um Maybe maybe some peace of mind, some presence to know there are things that we can do because of what is going on now. So a little bit deeper as we go. What is happening most of all now that I see in women in my office and stories that I hear is that people are having uh, post COVID-19 syndrome. They're having a lot of new problems. They're still sick. Most of the women that I see have not taken the shots um, and I'm not commenting one way or other, you know, the other on it. It's just that uh, most of the women who in my who are in who come to my office for bra thermography are very alternative. And so most of them have not taken those vaccinations, but they all have stories. We all have family. We have friends. We have people that were around that have taken the shots and are reporting are reporting problems. Or we have people who had the flu, who had something, whether you want to say it was COVID or whatever, they've had a problem, and then it keeps lingering and lingering and lingering. And I thought what was interesting, it says that it lasts between one month and one year after COVID, that one in five people from all ages have at least one medical condition from that, you know, <laughs> life shattering confrontation with the flu or COVID. And then if you're in a little bit older age group, that one in four of us have a medical condition that can be due to that COVID. So what can we do for that? How can we help ourselves? What's going on here that could be helpful? These are some symptoms, um, fatigue, symptoms that get worse uh, after uh, physical or mental effort. <laughs> I've been there, even though I haven't had COVID of any kind. <laughs> uh, fever, lungs. Now I've heard that a lot, a lot of lung prob problems, shortness of breath and coughing. So I definitely have seen that a lot. So um, those are some common symptoms. And some people are connecting it with their bout with the, you know, colds and flus. Other people are not. But when we get into joint pain, muscle pain, they are, you know, maybe connecting it just a little bit more. But then a whole host of people, again, whether they've had the uh, vaccinations or not, whether they've had shedding or not, whether they've had, you know, uh, the flu 
so many people are having neurological symptoms of the concentration, headaches, sleep problems, dizziness, a lot of pins and needles and uh, losing of smell and taste, uh, depression, anxiety, loss of hair. That's another one that I don't know if I've seen on this. But so we are having all kinds of problems recovering from these last two years. These are some more problems. And to me, these are some of the main problems, the heart symptoms. We are seeing that more and more with chest pain, fast pain. You know, some of it could be anxiety connected to our heart, you know, and, and uh, we get anxious, that kind of thing. But sometimes it isn't. Now, we're also seeing a lot more people and women that are having digestive sim symptoms, whether it's stomach pain or diarrhea or constipation. That's just going uh, sky high and up the roof. Um, we're seeing a lot more blood clots and problems with blood. So um, I had a, a friend the other day that had some surgery and she has not taken the shot, but they had complications with her knee replacement surgery because she was full of blood clots, not just a clot. She was she had several clots. And so it was very close uh, on that surgery. And basically, she is a, um, you know, she works with uh, people's hair and nails. And uh, she's my favorite, you know, uh, hairdresser, uh, that cosmetologist that I've gone to for years. And so I know she's a lot of, around a lot of people very personally that she may have, you know, whether you want to say shedding or not. And I've talked about this before, so I don't think anybody's going to be insulted to for me to use the idea that we do have shedding going around today and could be connected with so many of these problems. And then I have a whole host of other women that I've talked to, and they're having uh, mostly changes in their menstrual cycle. And those can be overwhelming over the top. And don't forget that I've mentioned, I don't have it on a slide this time, but just to go over it quickly in case some of you weren't here the time I mentioned it specifically, but in my office, I've had 22 women who have had their cycles messed up just over the top. And four women actually had uh, brown material, brown matter <laughs> come out uh, of their, you know, through their cycle. And um, it was fist size. That's why I was holding up my hand. I can't show you exactly, but it was fist size chunks of brown matter that they lost during their menstrual cycle for different women. And when I looked that up, it seemed to be more vaginal shedding. That's a, That's what it was describing on the website. Now, also four other women that were all around 70, and I was one of them, we all had periods when we were around our families at the holidays. There was a pattern there, you know, and then I've had a couple of women who have had miscarriages in my office. And so some of these problems are coming up and they're just hanging on and hanging on and you don't know exactly when they are going to uh, erupt or, you know, become a larger problem. Um, I think I'm going to slip uh, skip this slide, but we may come back to it. There is some ideas out there that, oh, maybe the COVID virus is not really a virus. So tuck that in the back of your mind a little bit later. And if you know anything about that, I would love to have you share it with us. There's lots, you know, there is some information out there about that. But how can we help each other? And it this specifically says women. I should have put men on here also. How can we help each other uh, with long haul COVID systems? So just a little bit of research on the internet. And this is what most places are telling us if they're just um, you're not into the alternative ideas. And they're saying we need to support our immune system. They're not really telling us much how, but to support it get better sleep, take some vitamin D, take probiotics, take mel melatonin, support the lymphatic system and decrease inflammation. And so, boy, that's not helpful too much, is it? That kind of gets us started and most of us can go, oh, I can get some vitamin D and some probiotics and melatonin. But then we get a little bit uh, more confused and don't really know how much to do. So as we start digging deeper and deeper into some of these ideas, I could literally probably talk for hours and open it up and 
let you give me some ideas on what you are doing to protect yourself. So it, it just goes on and on. So we will have some time to share that if you're interested. Uh, some other things that we do share in the office is we tell women about rebounding and lymph uh, drainage exercises through some bras exercises. And, you know, I hadn't really thought about it, but I do have those exercises and I could share those with somebody if you uh, would like me to at some point in time, but it's all about uh, getting lymph movement. And I'm not, I was kind of looking at myself right now. This is just, you know, um, very, very quickly, but I don't think in my video that I could actually show you um, the, the exercises at this point in time. I might be able to when we finish up, but if somebody wants me to show some exercises that I've developed for lymph drainage towards the end, I would be glad to share that when we have the full screen. We also have, uh, you know, suggest hot baths and all kinds of recipes and things for uh, getting some uh, toxins out of your system. And then we have lymph drainage for homeopathics. But that doesn't mean that that's really helping deep, deep, deep with what is going on today. That's just a start. So. I do have the Wave Watch, obviously, on, uh, and some women have worn the Wave Watch in the office. So the product that I work with a lot is a therm thermogram camera or thermography. And so up in the upper or the left, um, or the it's more the middle picture, you'll see that the lady has a, a spot right under her neck, and then it just drains down uh, to the top of her chest. And there's quite a bit of congestion there in those lymph nodes. And she wore the Wave Watch about 30 minutes on lymph drainage. And we, the second picture shows how that has improved quite a bit. So uh, we are able to catch some images and share the Wave Watch with women in the office for a short period of time. So obviously, since most of you already have the wave watch lymph drainage is a huge one that we need to be working with just to protect ourselves during this recovery time when we may not even be sick but behind the scenes we need to be protecting ourselves i'm not sure of the best way to say that but we need to be protecting ourselves so here's a couple more ideas um some people have actually had anaphylaxis right after they took the shot. And so wouldn't it have been nice if these people would have had a Wave Watch on them and they could have just pressed a button because there is a code for anaphylaxis. So very, very important to know some things ahead of time. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, we need to be planning better. We need to be thinking how we can protect ourselves. Protection, protection, protection. So people are having, you know, they were having fever, headaches, fatigue, pain at the injection site, chills, and swollen lymph node. So obviously the Wave Watch, if you had it, was something that you could use or maybe you could share with somebody that you were around right after the shot. Now, I have heard of a couple more people who are still getting the shots. Oh, I've gone back and I've gotten a booster. So maybe that would be something that you could share with people or if you, you know, are in that position that you needed to get a shot, that you have the Wave Watch so that it could protect you from some of these ideas. All of those are covered. The biggest thing is heart problems. And some people are feeling that. Some people are not. Some people are dying suddenly, just like Stu Peter's video is showing. So we're having a lot of different problems with the heart. So um, Carl, uh, my husband, I just got married last week, by the way. I don't know if I <laughs> now see that there, but I'm now Mrs. Olson. But uh, Carl was actually just playing for protection like we were talking about. And he played the uh, something on the heart, I think it was the arterial sclerosis, and he felt all of these clean out down here. He just felt a huge congestion that seemed to clear when he used the Wave Watch for the heart folder. And he wasn't feeling anything until he put that watch on and played through all of the ideas, but it did stop at one particular idea and he could feel something. And I'm not sure whether he said it was on one side or both sides, but I'll have to get him to maybe write that down. 
So definitely, if you have the wave watch, you have something right now that you could be using. But we have to know, to me, a little bit more about what to play through because some of these symptoms are just not as obvious that people are having. So myocarditis, and I do have to apologize. I did not get myocarditis on the uh, wave watch. I have pericarditis and I actually had the folder made for it, but evidently it didn't get on. But this was two years ago. It was before COVID even started that I actually put all of these ideas together. So I actually felt really blessed that I had covered 99% of the ideas, you know, but there are so many things on the heart, in the heart folder that you can cover it maybe in a different way or so. So um, there's a lot of shortness of breath. There's the fatigue again, the heart palpitation, chest pains or pressure. Uh, there's going to, there could possibly be some swelling in the legs and arms from fluid and maybe some lightheadedness. Uh, there could be the joint pain, the fever, sore throat, diarrhea, uh, loss of consciousness. And of course, you're not going to know anything about the last symptom until it happens. A lot of times it just sneaks up on people. But the myocarditis or pericarditis could be very, very um, sneaky on your system. And that's when we're losing people. Um, sadly, I still have some people who haven't seen or picked up on the fact that a lot of our athletes are dying left and right. And I, I'm not sure if I, I'm even up to date. The last I heard was that 800 athletes had died suddenly, just like the title of the documentary, Died Suddenly. And uh, again, I've had people that have no concept of that but they may mention that they have some of these um, actual symptoms. And then we start talking and we start working on it and trying to do something for them. And of course, I send them to the doctors, you know, for whatever they, they want to do. But all of us are in the mode of taking care of ourselves. So I really appreciate that you're here. Now, if uh, arrhythmias are coming up, you know, we could be uh, really confused on whether it's myocarditis or arrhythmias. We just know it's something going on. So we might be able to feel our heartbeat change. We might be able to feel it, that it's fluttering. We are feeling the shortness of breath, maybe some chest pain. But um, a study from a study, it's, it's called from trusted source, suggests that people with the myocarditis Ditis ex experience chest pain two to three days after the second dose. I have no idea. I'm still hearing and thinking that people who have not even had any jabs are still actually having some of those too. And that's just from the effect of shedding. Um, I came up with a few ideas to share with you. I'm not saying these are right or wrong or that you could get these supplements. And then at the end, when I open it up, you might be able to share some supplement ideas that you've used. And we've done that before. But standard process is available at most chiropractic offices. And this is real specific for their myocarditis um, protocol. And they have two different protocols. One is more for pills and the other is more liquid herbal type forms. So they would suggest calcium lactate, phosphate, cataplex ACP, cardio plus. Those are four ideas. If you think that your heart is having problems, those would be good to pick up. Uh, the opposite on the herbals would be astralagus, the hawthorn, and the echinacea. And you could pick those up in different brands. I'm just trying to give you an idea. These are some things that are being published. And there's stuff all over the internet. But this is what is, is maybe confusing me. There is so much stuff. How do we know what to do? There are so many supplements. I'm not sure what this would cost. And this is just for the myocarditis. Now, here's another one. I don't know if you have um, 
watched very many uh, shows on YouTube or, you know, PP it or rumble or where, where you're watching, but this one has seemed to just pop up all over. And I've seen it advertising in, in about 10 different places. So some of you may have seen that. And so it, the cost of it, it is three different supplements and it was $250 for about a one month supply. And of course they wanted you to take it forever. And um, it is, uh, you know, the uh, one on the, the root, the small bottle is silica. It's a mineral with other trace minerals and then vitamin C in it. And they're saying that this is really cleaning you out, you know? So if you're thinking through some ideas, you know, I, I am a huge person with salt, you know? So, um, that's a very similar one to salt and vitamin C. I may not have this on hand and I may need to take something, you know, but they have some really great ideas. The, then the middle product, the zero, uh, zero in has a uh, tyrosine it has caffeine in it. It's, it has uh, theanine, bean seed, velvet bean seed. I'm not sure that I've heard of that one in very many supplements. It has pine bark. I have all kinds of pine needle and pine bark, you know, supplements has curcumin and vitamin D. So that's another good connection that they have, but they just have a lot of advertisements. So, you know, look this up if you're interested. Again, we've got to spread out. We've got to open our mind. We've got to think what else could we do? And they are advertising this for this recovery time, everything that's going on. Uh, the third one that they pair together with it is more a little bit of a drink and it's a black seed oil. Uh, I have some of that, you know, I have reversatol, turmeric, raspberry, apple cider vinegar, aloe, aloe vera, and D-ribose. So a lot of those ingredients may be included in something else that you have. So I put this up here as a way, because they are getting so much advertisement for you to see and compare. And maybe if you don't have this on hand and you're starting to get sick, you can pick out some of these supplements and make sure that you are taking some of these. I'm not saying it's the same combination as this at all. I'm just saying in an emergency, you know, if you are not, if you don't have this and all of a sudden you're, you're worrying about something, this would be a quick idea to make sure that you're taking lots of minerals and vitamin C, that you're taking a lot of vitamin D. And if you've got some pine bark, a lot of people will have that. Uh, black seed oil, a lot of us have turmeric and a lot of us have apple cider vinegar. So just a short version, but dig deep. You want to make sure that you have uh, as much coverage and protection as you can get. So I think I left a, a you know a little bit uh, bare on this particular slide. I was thinking I might show some of the blood clots, and I have showed those before. And I just kind of my mind just kind of closed off. I am hoping that most of you are aware that there are several videos out there. Um, Dr. Jane Ruby, and she does, she is connected with Stu Peters, would have the most information about blood clots. And she has talked to embalmers and uh, they have videos and images of the trouble that embalmers are having with blood clots. So even if nothing, if we do not have any jabs or anything, there are still people having trouble with blood clots that should not be. So in my opinion, we need to be protecting ourselves from blood clots. So there is a folder in the Wave Watch, and maybe that's what I should have put on this bare spot right here, to go to veins and play through those occasionally. Play through the heart ideas where we have, like my, you know, my husband had, you know, this, he could feel it clean out up through this area. So his carotid artery did definitely seem to improve. And if you've got trouble up through there, they say you usually have trouble down in your heart. So be aware and do something protective for blood clots. Now, other people, again, either way, it, they may not have had any problems at all. I heard of a lady the, the other day that all of a sudden she just has a game. Well, I can't even say it. Sorry about that. I'll just shorten it to GBS. I'm not sure what got into me. I probably need a drink. But anyway, all of the nerves are messed up. 
And so it kind of shows that the signaling, it doesn't move through that damaged nerve area and it's very interrupted. So the nerve cells cause a lot of weakness and sometimes per, uh, paralysis. Now, this is not something new. There has been a lot of damage uh, with this particular syndrome. Um, for many years with different shots and different problems. And for a while, there was um, mention of some viruses that could be causing this. So again, if you know anybody or you're trying to, this is this is what you're trying to protect yourself from, you know, by doing some things, making sure you have something in your cabinet or the Wave Watch. We're going to, you know, keep talking about that. But, you know, here's Bell's Palsy. And some of you may have been on a couple of weeks ago when um, my video got cut short. Would, you couldn't hear it. But I did have a lady, uh, a video of a lady who had Bell's palsy and uh, she'd had it for 25 years and wearing the wave watch. Her Bell's palsy went away in about 25 minutes, the time it took us to eat dinner. So she was actually eating and wearing the wave watch and her Bell's palsy literally went away. And people got so excited. They were taking videos. It was, you know, kind of at a banquet and uh, people were um, just watching and verifying and letting us know that it really was happening. So she's been uh, very excited uh, since then and uh, seems to be uh, have no problems with it as, as far as I have heard. I need to check back in with her. So uh, the whole side of her face straightened out in that 25 minutes and um uh, Maybe I should just tell the story. There might be a couple of you who, have, who haven't heard it, but she, we had just gotten her food at the table when she, my lovely husband, Carl, put the Wave Watch on her for um, dystonia. I actually muscle tested, and that's the frequency that it seemed like her body needed. It was in the nerve folder, and instead of saying palsy, now the palsy one covers four different ideas for palsy, Bell's palsy, different kinds of palsies, but dystonia was the one that we played with her, and um, in two minutes, her shoulder, she said it just dropped. And it had been so tight, you know, she couldn't really move it correctly for years and years. And she was doing physical therapy. But two minutes on the wave watch, her shoulder dropped. And then she probably took a couple bites. And a few minutes later, she said something to the effect that her eyebrow just, uh, or excuse me, her eyelids, uh, it felt like she had a breeze going across her eyes. And that was the first time. And so she knew, you know, her eye had opened up. And of course, people were taking pictures and verified that her eye had changed in just a sh few short minutes. And then uh, she took a drink and um, she literally choked herself and, you know, had to spit up. And she goes, oh, my goodness, I haven't used my muscles like that for years. I can't drink like that. You know, she had not been able to do that. And usually she had to turn her head a certain way and tip it and, you know, be very careful so that she could actually drink without you know, spilling it. And so all of a sudden that had changed. And then she mentioned that her, you know, the muscles through here had changed. She could feel it literally changing. And then we almost uh, had a scream out of her at the banquet because she was uh, realizing that just in a few minutes, she could turn her head and her peripheral vision was back. She had not been able to see to the side for years and years. So it can't get any better than that. And that was all because we had the Wave Watch. I do not believe there are very many products that are going to protect you from that, or if you happen to get it, that you could possibly work with it. And of course, I can't say 100%, 100% of the people are going to be helped if they have Bell's palsy, but this was a, a great example. Now, other people are saying that they are having reactive arthritis, but it is not being reported. And I did not get a credit down here for where I got this information from, but they are saying, yes, other vaccines have caused uh, arthritis, reactive arthritis, but quote unquote, the uh, shots in the last two years are not connected with this and are not causing that. I'm not so sure that that would be true, but we do need to realize that even arthritis can be connected with some of the things that were that have been done to our bodies. So that would be another suggestion is to make sure that you're running some arthritis folders before something happens. So um, I'm about to finish up here. 
these are some ideas that I just, you know, quickly put on here and there will probably be some more. But all of these frequencies are included on the wave watch for the ideas that we just talked about. So we have frequencies for fever. We have frequencies for the heart of all kinds. That's a whole folder. You know, there's 10 or 12 different ideas. Uh, if you don't know what to play, play inflammation, you know, huge. So that inflammation, again, I'm apologizing. I don't have a specific one for myocarditis, but there it is. There's a possibility of the inflammation being very, very protective because that's what myocarditis is. My, myocarditis is it is inflammation of the heart uh same way with the stomach all kinds of problems there we have all kinds of frequencies we have all kinds of frequencies for blood clots we have all kinds of frequencies for hormones the menstrual cycle there's several frequencies for fatigue there's a whole folder for diarrhea uh, I said, uh, and it's just diarrhea or constipation. Those are the two choices. And what I was trying to accentuate was lungs. There's a large folder for lungs. So I would play through all of that once in a while because we are just connected to so many people. We don't know what our connections are to their health or our health. So we have a tool that we can be protected with detox the whole folder there is huge there's so many detox ideas and don't forget there's a specific detox for several kinds of heavy metals and again some of them are just general so they really cover a lot of different ideas does it say a particular heavy metal or graphene no but i believe that there's a lot of coverage there and there is a detox for viral detox and that's a very important one as you can tell there are frequencies for hair loss there are frequencies for sense of smell sense of taste and then if we look on the other side of course there's a whole folder for joints there's a folder for muscles uh, neuropathy is in the nerve folder arthritis is in the joint folder rheumatoid arthritis is in the joint folder um, there's sore throats. There's a whole folder for sore throats. There's a different folder for colds and flus. There's a different folder for viruses. And there's a specific setting for coronavirus. There's specific settings for COVID-19. And then uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and iodine are included as a frequency for you. Hydroxychloroquine is also a frequency and it is embedded in there. I don't say it specifically what it is, but you know, when you run the coronavirus combo or that folder with viruses completely, you will be getting that. And then um, it looks like I put rheumatoid arthritis or the reactive arth arthritis uh, again. So those are just a few of the ideas. I think it covers most of them, but there's probably a few more things that you could play on the wave watch. So uh, maybe if I skip back to this, um, I am very thrilled to say that there are so many on there and you do have a one-time fee, you know, for the wave watch. Um, and it goes on and on and on. Um, I couldn't take enough supplements every day to cover all of these ideas and protect me. But I can play a lot of these, uh, you know, during the day and have pretty adequate coverage. Now, I flew on an airplane uh, last week. And guess what I played? the coronavirus combo that was on while I was on the airplane. And then I was at a large convention and so many people were coming through. That's what I played most of the time. I didn't have any problems. So I was really thrilled, but um, did it, can I say it was definitely protective? You know, I'm not really sure, but I was glad that I had a tool and I didn't have to carry along 50 bottles of protection, you know, and be taking something. My go-to when I travel is salt and the Wave Watch and lots of water. And sometimes I try to take the hydrogen water with me a little bit, uh, if possible, or some pills to actually help with the hydrogenated water. So the reason that I think the Wave Watch is uh, very, very helpful, and I've mentioned this before, I just put it in another form, but 30 trillion reasons that the Wave Watch moves us because waves, waves and vibrations travel through our bodies faster than the speed of light. 
And um, I found somewhere that it says 4.3 times the speed of, la of light. And so whichever way you want to say it, it's faster than the speed of light. And waves from the wave watch or other acoustical frequencies are absorbed 100% of the time by our bodies. Now, here's the opposite. We could be carrying a lot of things with us, just like I mentioned. Uh, we could be carrying our prescriptions, but sadly, a little bit also, it's some of our supplements, you know, uh, or I should say supplements too. It, it, they're, they're kind of in the same category together in this idea. So vibrations from chemicals or other ideas travel at one foot a second and are 2% absorbed. 98% is lost to body heat. And I wanted to read that real carefully. I'm not trying to be negative about anything. I'm just trying to let you know why the Wave Watch can be very, very helpful and easy. I love supplements. Of course, we need to eat. We need to take vitamin D or get vitamin D through our food. We need to get vitamin D through vitamin C through our food, you know, that kind of thing. But sometimes when we rely too much on supplements or the other opposite, we rely too much on prescriptions, we're not getting a huge benefit at the time. It just takes a little bit longer. And you will notice that, you know, the uh, different brands of supplements, they want you to take them for six weeks to two months, sometimes three to four months before you feel anything. Uh, same way with prescriptions. You have to take them a while before you'll feel any difference. And they make it plain as day. So this is, to me, the reason behind it. 98% of these chemical vibrations are lost to our body heat and they travel very, very slowly. So I think that makes sense. And that's why I'm so thrilled to travel with salt and the wave watch and a cord to plug it in, of course. Sometimes that may, that may be a hassle sometimes for people. And this is just the longer way to say that the future and the sound of medicine and the quote that I you know, kind of broke down for you a little bit, came from Dr. Bruce Lipton. And he's the one that's saying that our chemicals travel at a foot per second and vibrations from acoustical sounds travel faster than the speed of light. And then one other person is telling us, and, you know, lots of people are telling us, but tones will be used for healing before the end of the 20th century. And so we're way beyond that. So we ought to be using, you know, sound healing for everything. Um, I think that is it. So we need to be looking at helping people to recover quicker. And hopefully I gave you some ideas today. So gals, and gentlemen, if we got in here today, I'm going to uh, let you um, unmute yourselves and uh, hop in if you've got anything that you'd like to, to say about uh, our um, information today or share anything about viruses or whatever else is going on in your life. So hello again, everyone. Uh, unmute and, and say hello. Hi, Linda. I have a question. My name is Linda also. Um, <clears throat> where would the uh, blood clot section be? It's in the veins. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Vein area. Uh -huh. Thrombosis. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I hope everybody can see me. I'm not seeing very many people here that were on earlier, but We've got several Lin Lindas today. Hi, Linda Cameron. <laughs> and Linda Hello. Warner was on. <laughs> this is Janie. Hi, Janie. Yeah. And all I've got to say basically is yeah. just buy the Wave Watch if you don't have one and use it and use it and use it. And it does wonders. I've had it for a year and a half and I can't believe how much better I am than I was when I bought it. I had no idea what kind of a life I'd had in between if I hadn't have had it, because I think I've tried practically everything on it. And it just seems like over a period of time, all this stuff's adding up and it's just, I'm getting better. Thank goodness. <laughs> because I was, 
at the bottom of the barrel. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> but about a week ago, I, I had played the limes folder just to be playing it. And I got down to almost the end of it, I guess. And all of a sudden I started to hurt my legs. I just felt terrible. And I turned on to see what it was. It was tularemia or whatever it is, tularemia, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fever. And it just kept hurting. And I thought, what should I do here? So what I did, I put it on the icon that makes it circle around and play that. Uh -huh. I let it play and let it play and let it play. I, I probably played it eight or nine times. And every time I tell you it hurts so bad when it went through that cycle, I thought, what on earth is going on? Wow. When I got to about number nine or 10, it started to back off. And I thought, well, that's probably enough. Then I probably don't need any more. And I, I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to use this watch or not, but that's what I did. And it just seemed like it worked. And I have run that file now several times since I get nothing, no reaction whatsoever. So what I had, I don't know. I don't know if it was that disease or not. I don't think it was. I think it was just something that probably was affected by that particular mm -hmm. files that you had in there, but it just seemed to work. So I don't know if that's an idea to help use this thing better or not, you know, but it seemed to me like I, it was just sensible for me to do that. So that's what I did. Janie, I think that's perfect. And that's what I do tell people if you're running a, you know, a series of ideas and some, you know, in the middle of them, something, you know, your body reacts some way, then look to see what it is and loop that and play it and play it as long as you, you know, feel that the pain goes away and it feels comfortable. So you did perfect and see whatever it was, it would make sense that that has gone away or at least, oh, you know, that you've helped it. And I do feel better also. Wow. So I don't know if it was all related to that or not, because I've played lots of other things, colds and flu mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, I'm not afraid to play anything on this thing. And <laughs> several times, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's and, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, but isn't it easier than all the pills I used to have? And I still yes, have. I mean, I pills. trust this thing. This, this is my <laughs> life. And the minute your video come on today and I saw all that, I said, all you need to do is just play the wave watch for all this other stuff. <laughs> well, some of it does. I mean, we have to have other things too. I agree. We have to have some supplements and things like that too. But uh, for the most part, this thing's got it. It's just, it's just got whatever we need. So just, but mainly just play it. Don't be afraid to and play those things. Janie, don't you have a testimony on the anaphylaxis too? Didn't you wake up in the middle of the night? Was that you? No, that wasn't me. That was my friend, I think. Maybe okay, because somebody um, has, has woken up in the middle of the night and played the anaphylaxis and said that it basically, you know, they thought it saved their life, you know. I um, think it's probably her because she has lots of lung issues and things like that, you know, and stuff. But I know I've used it on my dog and it works wonderful. And I practically use that thing about every day around here just because of my dog, if nothing else. He is so attuned to this thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. He'll come over and sit in front of me if he has a problem. And he'll look at me and look at me. And I think, what's the matter with you? Questions well, if I put on another file, he might still sit there and look at me. If I put on the anaphylaxis, he goes and lays down and listens to it. He is that oh smart. Which file is correct for that dog? Wow. Wow. One day he went so far, I was in the kitchen playing a, a something and it, he knew I had the watch on. He came out and he walked clear over to me and he went up my arm till he found the watch and he touched it and he turned around and he sat down and he left oh. it. And I thought, what's your problem? So that's when I figured out this anaphylaxis that he liked it so well. So I finally turned it on. And he turned around and went laid down. And he's done that many, many times since. He hasn't come up and really kissed the watch like he did that day, but he does the same type of thing. And, and it's always the anaphylaxis one that he likes. That seems to be the one that really affects that dog. And he, every day I practically, I play it. Of course, I hear it too. 
There's no doubt about that. My goodness. So I, I, well, know, I just thank you. Thing. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you for that inter information. Uh, Betty, I think we, uh, you wanted to say something too. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, um, I have, I've been using it while I work um, at my computer for, you know, for different, different things, um, concentration and I've used the ADD, but my son has a serious problem with carpal tunnel. So I gave it to him yesterday and he wore, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, and he wore it uh, for like an hour. He he left let the the carpal tunnel um, wavelength um, go for an hour. And I asked him, you know, if he felt anything. He said it's hard to tell. I don't I don't really think I do. But I'm wondering how long uh, does he just keep using it until maybe he does feel a difference. That's a really good question, but it's a hard question to answer because everybody is so different. So he yeah. might try it again, you know, try it a couple times. Um, but the really um, great, and I don't know if it's a better uh, testimony than anyone, you know, whatever, but I did have a lady that had carpal tunnel and she just wore it for 30 minutes in the office. And I've showed you pictures, uh, you know, before, but her hands just got ice cold. Uh, thermography pictures. I I took those pictures, and that's all we knew when she left the office after 30 minutes. But mm -hmm. she went home that night and slept, and she did not have carpal tunnel. So hers right. was a 30 minute turnaround. But it took you know a day for her to realize that because when she slept that night, her hands didn't freeze up. And normally they had you know they would. She said one hand would you know she'd have to keep it on or it would curl up to her chest, and then she'd have to work for an hour to get her hand and her fingers off her chest. So wow. that was yeah, I had never heard that before. And so she knew that night that it didn't happen, you know. Yeah. But so everybody's a little bit different, and it's hard to know. So I would say keep playing it. It's not going to hurt him. And maybe play some of the other frequencies for nerves too. Just like the, the lady with Bell's palsy. It wasn't the palsy one that did the trick for her. It was dystonia. So that's in that folder with the carpal tunnel. So you've tried the carpal tunnel one. So try some other nerve ideas. Something okay. else might speak to his body. Go through that folder and just mm -hmm. have him play the whole folder. Yes. And now my other question is, if you're playing something that your body doesn't need, are you going to feel it in a specific way? You should not. I have had a couple people say that maybe they've had a little bit of surgery and a, you know, a piece of metal, you know, whatever, titanium, like in hip, and that it really bothered that. And we were trying to figure out if it was messing with the metal. And, you know, everybody's almost thinking, oh, I probably had an infection there. That's probably why it was hurting. You know, I probably had some trouble there that it was cleaning up. Uh, but normally no one has any trouble. And the idea would be it's just a song. You, we listen to sounds all day long. They're not going to hurt us. Yeah. And I even say to people, um, you know, sometimes people will say, can I wear this if I have a pacemaker? And I kind of joke and say, well, can you talk to your spouse? You know, it's an acoustical sound. If yeah. she's going to sing to you or they're going to, you know, it, it's acoustical. So it should not bother them if it is the wrong, if it's not what medically is labeled. So, Okay. Okay, because my my curiosity was like, you know, like, how do you know, you know, you have some issue, but if you don't really know what the cause of it is, you know, like, right. so what you would say is, is that why you group them in together, together, yes. in folders? So definitely. That, okay, so you just go to the folder itself and, and play everything in the folder and that would, you know, kind of affect your body where it needs to be affected. Yes. Okay. Another example would be a lady that had Parkinson's. She didn't seem to get a lot of good out of that, although her husband did. did. And I've told that story several times. And uh, he felt her frequencies when they were sleeping together. It was just the cutest story. Yeah. And his his nerve pain went away in his feet from her Parkinson's frequencies, but they didn't help her that much. So I had her go to the nerve folder and the one that was labeled tremors 
is the one that helped her Parkinson's tremors. So again, so that when you say helped it, so she would have felt a difference right away. And that's how you know that that's, I'm not sure on her story, but she's, you know, she just knew that that was the one that made her tremors decrease. Okay. And people do use this while they sleep. Yes. Hmm. Okay. For sure. That's a great time. Okay. All right. Especially like for lungs, if you're waking up at one to three in the morning, that's a sign that your liver is messed up. So play liver at some point in time before you go to bed, or even if you wake up in the middle of the night from one to three, start playing the liver one. If you wake up from three to five, that's a sign that your lungs are messed up. So give yourself some lung protection to sleep better. Okay. Okay. Okay, and um, I tried to order some yesterday, or I had a customer try to order some yesterday, and it said that you were out of stock. I'm sold out. So, and so when do you anticipate having more? Should be three to four weeks, hopefully. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and you could check back well, in. I may have. Sometimes they send a little bit of stock ahead of time, and so you could check back in. And yeah. like, if I get a hundred, I'll put it on the internet, and you might just happen to hit it. So. Okay. All right. So um, we should pre-order. Put our name. It, it does not let you. My website does not, but you can put your name on an email to be notified. Okay. All right. I will have her do that. So that you can put so. your name on an email to be notified. Right. All right. Any other questions? Anything anybody wants to add? We're getting ready for a big holiday season and hopefully everybody's uh, uh, going to get to see some loved ones and friends and um, wear your wave watch so you're protected. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, any other? Oh, go ahead. Hi, this is Ann. Um, hi, Ann. Hi. I wish there was an easier way. I, I'm, I'm not good at how do you body test to see which frequency. And then if I want to put it on somebody else, is there an easy way yeah, to have get in there a body to see which frequency on them? Well, I've had a couple of videos on muscle testing. Yeah, and I could show you again really quickly. But other than that, it's just them saying that they have, you know, like a nerve problem, you know, yeah. so you could play the whole nerve folder, you know, or them saying, oh, I can't breathe, you know, so you have to kind of listen or, oh, my head hurts. Okay, so it could be headaches. Mm -hmm. You know, you could ask them more questions. Do you have migraine, you know, get to the bottom of it or, wow, maybe it's anxiety, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's a little bit more on the emotions. So they're you know, unless you're a muscle tester that uh, it's more kind of sorting and sifting through some ideas. Okay. And do you do it, turn it page by page and say, do I need something on this page or do you? You can. Uh, one way I have uh, also just came up with uh, is instead of using the booklet, you could do screen by screen on this. So you could, you know, have it on and you could say, do I need anything on the first screen? You know, okay. and then you could take it by, uh, you know, and if you don't need anything on the first screen, can't even get it up here. Yes. You know, then you can go to the next one. And if you need something on the next one, then you can start, oh, do I need, you know, something in women's? Do I need something in pathogens? You know, whatever. I and think can... I practice muscle testing or trust it better. Mm hmm don't get clear reads on it sometimes. And I think I'm, am I biased in putting in my own opinion on the muscle test? So I need, to you know, practice. and everybody thinks that, but if you're able to come to my office and practice with me, I think that you'll see how good your body is. It's really amazing that your body can do that. Okay. So uh, trust your body. You know, if you can't trust your own body, <laughs> you know, you can trust your body better than somebody else's, you know, that's another way to say it. You know, your well, body knows better than somebody else muscle testing for you. Well, I need to put it on the setting for trust issues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Linda, Thank you. Linda, is yeah. there a place that I can go to learn about muscle testing? Uh, I did two programs on muscle testing um, uh, on the Facebook. Yes. Oh, okay. And, uh -huh, and you could just look up, you know, how to different ways to muscle test. Okay. Know. All right, I'll go, I'll go back on the Facebook page. I did mm -hmm. join that. Yeah, there is one on muscle testing. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh.
Any other ideas or questions? Uh, Linda, this is Linda again. I have a question on the kids folder. It says ear conditions. Fun. I don't know. I'm trying to get in there, but I don't know how it's done. Use also, or do I just go into the candida molds and fungus, and that would deal with an ear itching? Uh, I would use both of them. Yeah, I think I put. You know, sometimes you don't know which folder to put something in, and uh, the ear the kids are the ones that really have the ear conditions and the mold in their ears so often. So I think that's why I put it there. But you could double. You know, you could protect yourself, saying, "Oh, this is for you know, it's an ear infection related to fungal." Well, I also have the fungal folder, so I'll play through that and make sure. Okay, thank you. I had a hard time hearing, so I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Uh -huh. We'll pass the word around. There's lots of things that we can do to protect ourselves. And um, okay, did did anyone anybody want to see the breast exercises? I was telling you I could show you these when we got to kind of a full screen. Is that something anybody be interested in? Sure. Okay, I'll do that real quick. Uh, in my office, I show women breast exercises for their lymph nodes, I'll and I've had mask on. and I've had uh, nine women have. Um, excuse me, it's twelve women that have had breast lumps go away overnight with these exercises that I show them. You know, uh, person oh, to great. person, and I really put these together when my mother had breast the cancer. Did you have Linda yeah. mute herself? <laughs> There we go, see if I can do that. So um, these exercises can be very good. And at this time of the year, especially, you know, when we're around people. So what you do is actually, you know, open your fingers a little bit and put your hands underneath your ears. And you can do these with me if you want just a little bit. And you're gonna start with the lymph nodes up here. And this also st stimulates the vagus nerve too. And you're gonna go down, you, you know, your throat and then off your shoulders. And several women have told me that, oh, this is really for anxiety and this is to, you know, uh, release emotions. So this is just a, a real quick stroke. And this would be helpful for anybody anytime, but very specific for lymph nodes. And so you could do this a couple of minutes and you can do this when you're, um, you know, watching TV, especially uh, when you're setting, uh, when you're riding in a car. I actually do it when I'm driving a lot of times and I'll have one hand on the steering wheel and the other hand will be, you know, doing one, you know, this way. Okay. Then the next exercise that you do in this series is to go across the base of your throat. And you're going to think thyroid on this. So I've had two women who have had their thyroid, uh, their heat, their body regulate just by doing this. They did not take any pills or any supplements. They just did this exercise here and they kept their body temperature for me every day for a month. And it normalized <laughs> within a month and they hadn't gotten, gotten it to work for anything else. So a simple exercise right across the base of your throat, whether it cleaned it, activated it, you know, did something. Those are the two ideas I would have, but that was very, very helpful for thyroid. You the next even, one, like put any pressure or anything. It's just no, a, it's very light. So you're activating your lymph nodes basically, and your lymph nodes are, uh, you know, very fragile. You don't want to, you know, hit them like a football player would in their groin area and close them up. We're trying to make sure that they're open and flowing so that the lymph can flow through. So we always want to do light exercise. Mm -hmm. And then the next series is right here. You're going to cross your hands and you'll put your hands right, and I'm kind of going to add an angle here. You'll put your hands right underneath your, um, <laughs> I can't make it look right on the screen. Uh, you'll put it underneath your collarbone, and then you're going to do feather-like strokes here. And this is the most important one. This clears out lymph nodes basically from the top half of your body. And I learned this because my mother had uh, breast cancer, and when she did radiation, it made her, um, basically hard as a rock mm. and beat red and she was that way for a year and a half and the doctors were not concerned and uh finally she went to the right doctor i shouldn't have said that uh she she went to a, a different doctor and the nurse was the one who showed my mom this exercise and so my mom did this and within a week her redness went away. Her hardness didn't go away, but just her redness. And this is the only exercise she learned from the nurse. 
And so I went, uh, you know, I learned this from my mom that her redness had gone away and I created the other exercises and put them together. And within a month, my mom's hardness had yeah, gone away pretty. just from these exercises. And does that, how long do you do the exercises? So about two minutes on each area, you know, mm -hmm. so now we got a couple more. I kind of was telling the, you know, the importance yeah. of this one. And then the next one is just to hold your hand up and your arm up and just to go, you know, underneath your arm, you're just, you know, moving some, some left nodes through here and a little bit more of a stroke across your breast area yeah. this way. Okay. And then it gets a little bit more. I'll see if I can show this to you. You're going to uh, work with your uh, nipples. You're going to uh, press. You can twist. You can move. You know, you're going to just manipulate and uh, massage your nipples a little bit because we do have all kinds of cancers and, uh, you know, milk ducts and things set up behind those. So you're going to spend a couple of minutes just working with the nipples. And then the next exercises are going to be six second squeezes. And what you'll do is put your hand on your chest and then um, basically um, uh, hold it right here just for six seconds. That's all you do. You're just holding it. Not very hard at all, is it? Mm. And then you put your hand on the rib cage and go the other way and hold it this way. So you're just self-massaging. Not very hard at all, but 12 women have had breast lumps go away overnight. And then the next one is you put your hand in the center and then you'll press in this way. So one lady actually had a uh, lump that was the size of her thumb and she'd had it for 11 years. And uh, it went away overnight. I actually saw her at a an evening workshop. So she learned the exercises in the evening. And at 10 o'clock the next morning, she called me and her lump that had been there for 11 years was gone with these exercises. So this would have been one of them that it would have, would have been very helpful because her lump was right here. And nobody had ever told her to just massage, you know. So then you're going to go the other way. So you go this way. And, you know, this way. So you're just massaging your breast, you know, with some six second squeezes. And then the last two ideas would be to go around your breast and hold that for six seconds and then twist one way and then twist the other way. You know, So I, that's why I was telling you it's pretty. Uh, but it is really a good one because so many women have had some some good help with that. Hmm. And especially in this time, if you've got some, you know, you're feeling anything, if you like my, um, you know, my husband now, I'm going to, uh, we're going to work with him to, you know, do a little bit of physical exercise too, because he did feel something when he was running the, the heart frequency. So we'll try to make sure that he's getting some massages for his lymph nodes. And so those would be some of the things actually move around and he could do some rebounding. He could do some uh, lymph drainage and things like that. But um, it's very important to make sure everything is flowing smoothly. So anyway, just a quick idea that may have not been very professional looking here on the camera, but um, <laughs> appreciate your time there. <laughs> so any other questions that I can answer or help? Other than that, we're getting ready to sign off. Okay. No, thank you so much. Can't think of anything You're... right now. All right. Thank you, Linda. All righty. Bye-bye. Everybody that have was, a um, Merry. Well, we're not quite Christmas yet. I'll be on next week, but that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.